grade fives, this is your teacher, Mr. McMurdo. This video will cover the answers to lesson 7.2, interpreting double bar graphs. These pages are 263, 264, and 265 from your workbook. Question one, it asks you to look at these double bar graphs. And question A asks you, what attributes does every graph have? The answer to this question is that every every graph has a title, a horizontal axis, a vertical axis and a legend. Question B asks you, how are they different? So how are these two graphs different? So if we look at these two graphs, we can see that the scale of each is different. So as you can see, this graph, every line here goes up by five. So the scale on this graph is five. And if you look over here, the scale on this graph is equal to 0 0.5. Graphs, another, di uh, another difference between these graphs is the graphs A and D have horizontal bars and graphs B and C have vertical bars. So those are the differences between those four graphs. Moving on to question two on the next page, which is page 264. Choose two graphs from question one. For each graph, write a question you could answer using the graph. So let's look, take a look at graph A. So I'm going to write the answer over here. So this is 2 a. So for graph A, a question that I could ask. So let's go back to these graphs of question one. So question one was medals won in the 2006 Arctic Winter Games. I'm going to ask the question, which team won more gold medals than silver medals. So I can go back here and see which team won more gold medals than silver. Well, my gold medals are the peach colored. So which team won more gold than silver? Are there any? Yes, of course. There's this team right here. It's the only team that won more gold medals than silver medals. So let's take a look at graph B. Graph B is the th this table represents the thickness of sea ice. Now the thickness is in meters, and then it's looking at different regions so and different years so we can see that the thickness of the sea ice has decreased in the most recent years so it's decreasing over time in all of these regions so my question that i could ask for graph b
would be what has happened to the sea ice in all the regions shown? And the answer to that question is all the sea ice has decreased in thickness. Let's take a look at graph C. So graph C. Graph C, category four and five hurricanes in 30 years. So the West Pacific in the past had about 80, 85. And then in the most recent 14 years, it's had over 115. Okay, so what can, what question could I ask? Well, well, let's see. So for graph C, I could ask what can you say about the number of category four and five hurricanes occurring in the two fifteen year periods in the two fifteen year periods so have they increased have they decreased so i can look at the graph and i can say well in the last 15 years the second 15 year period the number of category four and five hurricanes have increased in all regions now let's take a look at graph d so some languages spoken by aboriginal people so we can see in Alberta is represented by the red and the blue or British Columbia is represented by the blue. So some languages spoken by Aboriginal people. So we can see that a number of people in Alberta speak Blackfoot, Sioux, Dakota, French. Ojibwe. So the question I could ask is which? So I can ask the question about languages spoken, and it's a comparison between Alberta and British Columbia with Aboriginals speaking other languages. So we could say which province has more French spoken by Aboriginal people. So Aboriginal should be capitalized. So I can go back to my graph and I can see, well, French are spoken by more people in British Columbia than in Alberta. All right, that takes us to the end. And obviously your answers for that question are going to vary. Um, but those are some examples of answers you could have had. So let's move on to question three. Kelly is in a combined grade four or five class. She surveyed her classmates about their favorite recess activity. Kelly then drew this double bar graph to make a comparison between the grade fours and the grade fives. So question A asks you, what is the most popular activity for grade four students? Well, grade four students are the yellow bars. So we can see that soccer and dodgeball are the most popular activities for grade four students. So we would say soccer and dodgeball. 
because there are three students that prefer those two sports. For grade five students, we can look and see that the most popular sport for grade five would be soccer. And how many students are in each grade? Well, to figure out how many students are in each grade, we simply add up the bars. So this is three, two, two, three, two. So the number of grade four students is equal to two plus three plus two plus two plus three, which is 10, 12. 12 grade four. And then we'll add up the grade five students. So we have six, four, and one. So we have 11 grade five students. What else could I tell from the graph? Well, I can tell that none of the grade five students prefer playing dodgeball. We can see there is no bar in dodgeball for the grade five students. And we can also see that soccer is the most popular overall. Because if you add up these two numbers, that equals nine. Here, this equals three, this equals six, three, and three. So we can see that the most popular sport for grade five and grade four added together is soccer. Moving on to question four. Suppose you are the manager of a new NHL hockey team. Which of these three hockey players would you pick? Jerome Aginla or Marcus Naslin or Ryan Smith? So use the data from the double bar graph to explain your choice. Who would you choose? Marcus Naslin, Ryan Smith, or Jerome McGinley? They're obviously not taking into account their leadership because this guy was quite the leader, their grit and determination. So Ryan Smith was a, was a person, a player that would go into the corners and would fight for the puck and would play with a broken nose. He was inspirational. And then Marcus Naslin, he had touch. He had great hands, just a just a playmaker and just a wonderful hockey player. If we were just looking at goals and assists, so who would you want? Well, Marcus Naslin has, you know, about 43 assists and about 32 goals. Over here, Jerome ginla has got 35 goals and 31 assists. And then over here, Ryan Smith also has about 36 goals and about 30 assists. So if I was just going to look at points, I would pick Marcus Nasland. And I would pick Mar Marcus Nasland because he got more goals than assists. So he, sorry, he got more assists than goals and to me that equals a good team player so he didn't get as many goals as the other players but he did get a lot of assists so i would want somebody who could you know make plays and make those pe the, pe the players around him better because he was still had a respectable goal count he had 32 goals not as many as jerome mcginla but still, overall points, if you add up his points, he had a significant amount more than the other two players. Moving on to question five. Where is question five? Question five is over here. What does this double bar graph show? So we can see by the title, some nutrients in apples and bananas. So it's comparing between Vitamin C, calcium, and iron in apples and bananas. So we could show, so this graph shows, shows how how 
cacao, apples and bananas. Apples and bananas. Compare. Whoops. That's not spelled correctly. Compare in vitamin C, calcium, and iron content. Question B. Which fruit provides more vitamin C? Well, we can see right here quickly. This is the great thing about double bar graphs is you can quickly make a comparison. Bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S have more vitamin C. Which fruit provides more calcium? Well, that would be apples. Now, D. An apple, an, or sorry, an orange contains 70 milligrams of vitamin C. How do apples and bananas compare to oranges for vitamin C? So... We can see mass in milligrams and nutrients. So we can say apples and bananas have much less vitamin C than oranges. So we can say because it's, there's only 8 for apples and 10 for bananas. So we would say apples and bananas have much less how do apples and bananas compare to oranges for vitamin c and question e write a question about this graph and then answer your question so we can say how, this is a very simple question how about which fruit has more iron <clears throat> i'm asking a question about these two bars here and we can see that the answer to that is, sorry, bananas. Bananas have more iron than apples. Question six, look at this double bar graph. What could it represent? Use a copy of the graph, write a title and legend for the graph and label each axis. What is the scale? Now, your answers are going to vary for this question, but they should be similar. Everybody should have the same answer for scale. Well, that's not true. You may, may come up with a different scale, but um, here's my answer. How about the graph could represent the favorite pizza toppings of two grade five classes so it's a double bar graph so you're making a comparison between two subcategories and for this it's two different grade five classes a title could be well let's write the title favorite pizza Toppings for grade five. That's my title. Now, what? Well, and then uh, I should probably put different. Actually, I'm going to change this. Favorite toppings. of grade five and we'll go five c and five d because i'm comparing comparing between two classes in grade five now the horizontal axis could be labeled toppings and the vertical axis could be number of students and then the scale could be one scare one one line or one square represents one student so that would be two four six eight ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 
12. No, I need to... I'm not going to be able to fit all of these in with my... So this would be 10 up here. So number of students is my vertical title and toppings is my horizontal title. And then I need to write the toppings. So this could be pepperoni. This could be ham. This could be extra cheese. And this could be peppers. So which is the most popular topping? It would be ham would be the most popular for all of grade five. And then I also need to have a legend. So I'm going to have one square be peach. And we will say that this is 5C. And then we need one square that will be green. So we'll have a green one. And that will be 5D. Don't forget the legend. Or your viewer or reader will not know which bar represents which category. All right, moving on to the reflect question. How are a bar graph and double bar graph alike? Well, they both use bars to show data. How are they different? Well, a double bar, well, another, sorry, another, obviously, another way that they are alike is they both have titles, they both have horizontal and vertical axis titles, and they both have scale. How are they different? Double bar graphs have two bars and they have a legend and they show two sets of data at the same time. When would you use each graph? You would use a double bar graph when you want to compare two sets of data. So once again, a double bar graph is going to use the same data that you would use in a single bar graph, but you are going to want, or sorry, you, the goal of using a double bar graph is to compare two sets of data. So you can make a comparison. That is the main purpose of a double bar graph. And that's why you would choose a double bar graph versus a single bar graph. I hope you found this video useful, grade fives. I hope you understand this lesson. And once again, if you have any questions or comments, please send me a private message and we can set up a private tutorial. And if you don't, I will see you soon and talk to you soon. Till next time, grade fives.